What is up guys, it's the Secret Stash Bros again, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. So typically how we run things around here, as you guys know, um, is we create a piece of furniture with a secret compartment. Sometimes it's something we see on, on Google and we're like, oh, we should build that. Sometimes it's something we create ourselves, like with the jewelry box, where it's our own idea and we're going to try and figure out how to do it. With this uh, section of our channel, we are going to be taking a look at all these different puzzle boxes and how people create them. The one that we're going to be doing today is this one. This is the Amazon Choice one. At, at the time, it's the Amazon Choice one at the time of this video. Um, and we're going to be trying to figure out how to get into it. My guess is that this thing is made severely cheap. Uh, very cheaply. Stash in the cash. It says stash your cash. Yeah. Um, so Can they're you? taking after us. I'm going to level with you guys. I'm pretty sure this thing is made in China. And I I am pretty confident we will we'll be able to crack it in at least five minutes. All right. Before we get started on looking at this, just want to clarify that we're, we're taking a look at this to see how someone else put together the mechanisms to hide how to unlock. So let's get into it. Okay. Okay, so just a reminder, guys, we don't know anything about this. I found it on Amazon. It was like 14 bucks or whatever. Uh, if you want to get it for yourself, the link's down in the, down in the description. Um, yeah, use your name. Yeah, this guy has. Oh, look at that. That was nice. No, not leave that. Oh, stop. Why, why do you have to open both ends? <laughs> the instructions, we don't want those. Only if we get stuck after You got hour. any money on you? I think I do have some money. One second. So as an incentive, we are going to put my most beloved $20 bill. Oh, God. It doesn't even fit. Jeez, the people that make this stuff. Uh, here, okay. take my knife. Oh, no. Okay, All right. there. It's, it's locked away forever. It's in. All right, go ahead, Annie. You right, try first. Try, try first. Does yeah, that, that move that at all? That does not spin. It doesn't. Well, first of all, it's really light. Yeah, it is really light. I don't want to break it. Um, there's two things right here. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I see. It doesn't. It's there's no seam here. There's one seam on the back. Oh wait, this looks like it pops out. Yeah. Here we go. Hang this on, is, don't force it. So this pops up, nice. Okay, I don't know how far that goes. Does this move now? Okay, that, that's cool. Oh. So that's got a little bit of oh, give. All right, so, so we went, you went up yeah, with that. Yeah, so we like went up that. with that. We went up with that. That moves over. Oh, I flipped that up. Okay. Grab it, hold it down, pull it up. I bet it comes out. No, no, it's, it's latched. There's a groove on it. This is... Yeah, we've never... Oh, oh. There we go. Okay. So that pops out. So... This... Comes oh, out. this just comes right out. Okay, so yeah, th this one was pretty easy. However, as I'm looking at this thing, I don't think it'll be as easy to make. Puzzle boxes, I guess, I mean, they're not an easy thing to make. That's why there's not many people on YouTube who do them. But we're going to try and figure out how to do this. So let's hop into the build. What we're going to do is we're going to build a little nightstand with this possible mechanism in it. <laughs> Okay. Okay, guys. Um, so, change of plan. Uh, what I was going to have us do for this segment, as you heard me in the intro, is we were going to build this puzzle box. We're not going to do that now. Dad, as you just heard him say, we're going to make a nightstand out of it. So, we're going to use the mechanisms from this uh, puzzle box, and we're going to implement them into a nightstand, apparently. Shout out to, uh, I forget who you are at this very moment, I'm very sorry, who recommended us building a nightstand in one of our past videos. Thank you again. Um, so let's see how this goes, I guess. Now see, this is the kind of stuff I was talking about in our last video. When I asked Dad what he wants to do or what he wants to build, sometimes he doesn't agree with me and he does his own thing, like he did here. We're supposed to build the puzzle box, but no, he wanted to build a nightstand. For starters, the first thing we had to do was make sure that we had all the pieces for the framing of our box done, complete with dados in the sides for the sliding tabletop. As of right now, as you can see, we got uh, the box portion right here complete. Oh, my bad. We got the box portion uh, completed right here. We just have to make this flap and this piece in here. I don't know if you can see that down below. That's going to be a little bit taller than this outside frame. Uh, but Dad noticed something that we want to fix on this box. They, they cut away some of this to give the seam. I'm going to try to eliminate that seam. or it's There's going to be one, but it's going to be less obvious. 
typically with most puzzle boxes, it's completely obvious that there's something inside that you need to get out or that you need to figure out a way to get into it. But with this project, we're going to try and challenge ourselves in two different ways. We're going to challenge ourselves by trying to figure out how this thing works and how it goes together and trying to find a way to conceal the whole thing to make it look really natural. For this little piece right here, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to drill two holes in the pieces that have dados. Once we do that, we're going to stick some small dowels in there along with our counterfeit piece like right here. We're going to put them together and then we have to nail all three pieces together because otherwise there's not going to be a way for us to, to slip this piece in after the fact that we have nailed these two side pieces in. Because this flap is going to have two dowels on each side of it, it's extremely important that you line them up perfectly on each side of the box. If they're off by even just a little bit, it won't be able to rotate. One trick you can use to get your dowel fitting right is to just stick it in your drill like Dad did here and then just twist it when it's inside the hole. Take it from us, you really don't want to have to make this piece twice. The piece that you see us making here is one that I'll be explaining in a moment because it's a little hard to understand. One thing you'll notice about this sliding top here is that it has these dowels uh, in the front. And what those are used for is, uh, where is, it? Where is it? what those are used for is sliding into these two pockets up here. We already got this piece mostly done. We just have to cut the pockets out um, on this piece down here. That is going to slide right here. Those pegs will slide into those grooves, preventing you from opening them. Dad's also very loud with the drill. So in these clips here, what we're trying to line up is the tabletop with the dowels in it and the end piece with the notches in it. I can't stress enough how important it is in these types of projects to get all your pieces matching up correctly. I know I say it a lot, but when you have this many moving parts in one single project, if you get off by even just a millimeter, it's going to screw everything up. So we really took our time with this to make sure that we got all the measurements right. When we first started this, we could lift up on that. Notice how it's tight here. What I'm trying to figure out right now is how, how to cut this piece that's going to sit and glued on top of this. That's going to act like this piece for me. Now I should be able to slide that forward, which gives me enough clearance to lift this up. I guess I kind of lied when I stated earlier that this piece was almost done, but we were experiencing some problems with it because where we cut out the holes for the dowels, they weren't lining up quite right. Okay, so this is day two of this build. I didn't get any time to edit the footage of this video yesterday night. What we're doing now is we're going to be making a second top that's going to fit inside here. The plate that we're about to make is going to sit right in here. We're going to glue it to the top of this so that this can't move inside here. The top piece will pin it, pin this one in between these two pieces here so that this can't move. I don't know if it's making sense to you guys yet, but it will in a little bit. One small oversight that we had with this project was that two of the pieces had lips on each side. The purposes for these lips was so that you couldn't just lift up the flap whenever you wanted to or lift the tabletop up without undoing other parts first. So because we didn't account for these two things, we had to take these trim pieces and go back and stick them underneath the tabletop and the other flap. If you think this was an easy fix for these two problems, you'd be wrong. We actually spent about 30 minutes on each trim piece just trying to get it to fit flushly under the flap and the tabletop. When we first started this channel, we wanted to woodburn all of our projects because we wanted to have a signature style here on YouTube. But now we realize that wood burning isn't just great for aesthetics, but also hiding secret compartments. What's great about it is that you can hide lots of seams and cracks in any of your projects. We were going to trim out this whole box, but then we found that wood burning just looks so much nicer and conceals all the cracks better. Alright guys, the box portion is done, the only two things we have left are 
we're going to stain this bad boy and attach the leg because what would a nice stand be without something to stand on? Oh yeah, and we also have to put some legs on and a shelf in and then we'll burn those legs, that legs, don't, that, that, those legs and the shelf and then stain it and did I say stain it? I probably said stain it. I don't remember because I'm not good at remembering what comes next. Sorry guys. For our legs, all we used was some of our leftover 2x4s and then took them to the table saw to rip them like we usually do. Then, we took them over to the planer so that we could get them flat and smooth. After that, we just put some 45 degree angles on the top and cut a chunk out near the back so that it would look more natural when it was attached to the nightstand. As usual, we drilled our pilot holes into the side of our box and then decided to attach our screws from the inside of the box. This way there would be no evidence of them when you look at the box from the outside. We also had to make sure that we put joists in between our legs. This is pretty much common knowledge for anyone designing a table or anything with legs. Everything has to have a joist in between so that the whole structure stays solid. If you're going to try and make a puzzle box for yourself, like the one we made here, it's important that you try and get the perfect combination of looseness and tightness. I hinted at this in our last video, but it really is important. If it's too tight, you're not going to be able to get the whole thing apart, and if it's too loose, the whole thing's going to rattle and it's going to look like crap. So make sure that you get the perfect combination of those two. Okay, we gotta level with you guys. This was a bad day. <laughs> okay, it took us two days to do this project. And yesterday, yesterday was fine, besides the fact that I didn't know we were gonna build an end table. Today, me and Dad got into an argument. This sucks. And I think this is gonna be our last video. I'm just kidding with you guys. <laughs> um, but seriously, we did have an argument, but we're real people. That's what happens, you get in arguments, and then um, right at the very end, as we were filming the last part, I dropped the camera and it cracked. It is still in somewhat of working condition right now. It cracked on it. It, <laughs> it. it cracked right by the, the, le the screen, by the corner. You didn't tell me that. I thought you'd seen it. But yeah, it was not a great day. Um, thanks for watching anyways, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe because I need a new camera now and it was actually my sister's camera um, So double subscribe because I'm gonna have to probably get two cameras um, Yeah, I'm gonna need to get a patreon page. Thanks for watching. See ya Bye This is great <laughs> Alright, well, let's just go. Uh, I just come show them your face. Come on That is the face of Disgust. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, you have to be kidding me. What what well, nails did you put in here? What? Those are just the one inch ones. I haven't changed them. <laughs> Once again, Jan has been foiled by the long nails. All right.